Hi, my name is Isaac Shutt. I'm an estate planning attorney. I'm licensed to practice law both in Texas and in Wyoming. In this video, I'll answer what are the most commonly referenced drawbacks to having a trust. Now, if you'll watch some of my other videos, you'll see overall, I'm a big fan of trusts, but I also don't think they're perfect and trusts do have some drawbacks. So let's talk about what some of those drawbacks are and see if any of those might be a deal breaker for you. Number one, there is an additional startup cost to having a trust-based plan instead of a wills-based plan. And what I mean by that is, if you go to talk with uh, an attorney about creating a will or a trust, the initial cost for that attorney to prepare your will or trust is almost always higher if you have a trust-based plan. So for some people, that's sort of a deal breaker. Maybe it's not in their budget, or they just don't really care that after they pass away, things may cost a little bit more for their relatives, um, like what you would have with a will because the will has to go through probate. Some people would say, yeah, I don't really care what things cost after I die. That's not hugely important to me. I'm more interested in what things would cost now for me to do a will versus trust. So I wanna go with the cheaper option and that would be the wills based plan. That is, sometimes we have clients that come into our office and they're in their 70s or 80s and they really don't have much. Um, I mean, sometimes it's just an account or two. And for that person, a trust might actually be overkill because a basic will can deal with that account or two, especially if you don't have complicated uh, beneficiaries. And, you know, so for some people, they would just look at me and go, Isaac, why do I need to spend the money to have a trust when I don't have anything? And so if you really don't have much, uh, you may not be interested in having a trust because it might just be overkill. Another drawback to having a trust is that you really have to be careful when you establish that trust and really be tuned in uh, to what you're getting because some trusts are irrevocable. And what that means is they can't be changed. So if you inadvertently got an irrevocable trust established by your attorney and then you put a bunch of assets into that irrevocable trust, guess what? That's unchangeable. And usually in the wording of that irrevocable trust document, it's going to say that you're not the trustee of that irrevocable trust, which means you can't even control the assets that you permanently put into that trust. So it's really important that you go see, uh, if you're gonna do a trust, it's important that you go see an experienced estate planning attorney because you don't wanna accidentally create the wrong kind of trust that could be an irrevocable trust um, and so that would be a drawback to a trust is that you have to be a little bit more thoughtful uh, when you're creating that document so you don't do something that's irrevocable. Kind of on that same type of theme, you have to be careful when you create a trust because some trusts may negatively impact your beneficiary's ability to receive governmental benefits. And so what I mean by that is a lot of times we have beneficiaries who are receiving like a social security benefit or things like that. And if they're listed as a trustee or a beneficiary rather in a just a typical revocable living trust, that inheritance that they're receiving via the trust could sort of be a deal breaker in terms of their governmental benefits. So they make it kicked off of their Social Security or Medicaid um, because of the way your trust was worded. And so you have to be really careful, um, especially if you have a beneficiary who's got special needs or is receiving governmental benefits. And so you need to, uh, again, seek out an attorney with a lot of experience drafting trust so that your trust is really what's best for your beneficiaries if something happens to you. Last but not least, trusts, at least at first glance, seem a little bit complicated or overwhelming to people. And so if you go in and you create a trust-based plan with a law office like ours, we actually go to a lot of length in describing the documents and making sure that you as the signer understand what the documents do and that you're very comfortable with those. So when you leave our office, you're going to know what your trust does and how it works. So 
even though it's sort of a long document, sometimes a trust document might be 20, 30, or 40 pages long, um, you may take a look at it and go, wow, that seems really complicated. Well, you as the client preparing the document will usually understand how it works and see that it's not super complicated. But I will say as a drawback to having a trust, if your beneficiaries go and look at your estate planning documents and they see this 40 page document, it can seem a little overwhelming to them. And they may need to go see an attorney just to sort of translate that legalese into English. So I think that that may be a negative uh, in terms of a trust versus a will, uh, because the will is usually much shorter and is written in a way that people can more easily understand it. Whereas sometimes the beneficiaries of a trust, if something happens to you, may actually have to go have a lawyer just help them interpret what your trust document says. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, my name's Isaac Shutt. I'm an estate planning attorney licensed both in Texas and in Wyoming.